Hello and welcome to Newsroom. I am Philips Levin. Today we will be bringing to you highlights of events that happened within the week under the review of the 15th to the 19th of November 2021. This week, the House of Representatives has resolved to set up an ad hoc committee to intervene and resolve the diplomatic war between Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates. Also this week, the House of Representatives has passed a second reading, a bill to make healthcare delivery for Nigerian children free and compulsory. Meanwhile, the Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Universities, ASU, and the federal government this week reached an agreement on the 22.17 billion Naira earned allowances and a 30 billion Naira revitalization fund. Details of this and more comes to you after this short break. Now, we begin from Yola, the Adama state capital, where as part of strategies to boost his gubernatorial campaign team, Abdrazak Namdas has set up a house-to-house -house contact team to further his political ambition. The contact team consists of two elders, two women from the 21 local governments of the state. During separate meetings with elders and women of the All Progressive Congress, drawn from the 21 local government of the state, which took place in Yola, the stakeholders promised to embark on a house-to-house -house mobilization of the electorates to ensure the success of NAMDAS in both the primary and general elections. While pouring communions on the gubernatorial hopeful, all the stakeholders were unanimous and upbeat that NAMDAS has the pedigree, integrity, experience, exposure, and exuberance needed to hold office and deliver the goods effectively. I, it was a successful meeting. I met with two groups. I met with elders and I've met with uh, women. Next week I will be meeting with youths. All along is to discuss my ambition, consulting all over my ambition to be a governor of Adama State by the grace of God. So I think uh, the responses are very, very, very encouraging. And I'm happy that it has come to this. So I know the plight of the poor person because I am one of them. So having come to this level, nobody will deceive us. We will make sure that we restore the dignity of this state back to its normal place. Very essentially, we must have security in place. We must also have our children to take education as a priority. And it's easy to do it in this state. No challenge. No. In this next report, the management of Bill and Melinda Gates College of Health Technology, Ningi, debunks report of alleged involvement in admission malpractice and news that the Chairman Governing Council decides who gets admission. Our Bauchi State Correspondent Awal Hassan was at the press briefing at the Nigerian Union of Journalists, NUG Secretariat, Bauchi. It is on the issue of admission malpractice, a publication by an online newspaper indicted the management of Bill and Melinda Gates College of Health Technology, Ningi, accusing the management and chairman governing council in particular of deciding who gets admission. The attention of the management of the above institution had been drawn through two forceful reports titled Admission Malpractice, Assault on School Laws. Threatening academic qualities at Bauchi State College of Health Technology, Ningi, and Infinity Reigns at College of Health Technology, Ningi, Chairman Governing Council deciding who gets admission, dated uh, 10th October uh, 2021, respectively. And I wish to state as follows The Levelos articles were nothing but a means to give a dog a bad name in order to hang it on the part of some aggrieved academic staff of the college. The provost submitted that the libelous publication were instigated by some aggrieved academic staff of the college, whom he alleged were found to be involved in a high level of corruption that stained to high heavens. 
which he said they had over the years perfected to the extent of lining their pockets with illegal money that was supposed to go to the college coppers. With the coming of the present governing council, which was appointed to address the mayhem of the problem dividing the college, that has tripled its growth as a result of corrupt activities being engineered, controlled, and executed by them. The council constituted a committee under the Bauchi State Chairman American Health Workers Union, Mahun, to find out problems hindering the development of the college and the means by which it can be addressed as well as to block financial leakage in the college. At the end of this assignment, the committee submitted its report to the council and it was discovered that some of the problems hindering the development of the college were the overstay of some officers on tenured appointment which had made them assume themselves as superior to the governing council. The proverb here calls on the general public to disregard any attempt aimed at discrediting the integrity of the college. He says the present governing council is doing all its best to ensure academic excellence. Awal Hassan, Viewer TV News, Bauchi. The House of Representatives has resolved to set up an ad hoc committee to intervene and resolve the diplomatic war between Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates. The resolution was equal to a unanimous adoption of a motion by a representative in duty Elumelu at the plenary on Tuesday. Moving the motion earlier, Elumelu said that Nigeria and UAE have had a positive diplomatic relation and in 2009, the UAE established its embassy in Nigeria. Lawmakers express the need for reorientation for Nigerians living abroad on the need to conduct themselves properly, stressing that the motion was critical because Nigeria was at the verge of being disengaged. The House thereafter resolved that the members of the ad hoc committee should be drawn from committees on aviation, foreign affairs, presidential tax force on COVID-19, interior, national orientation, diaspora and treaties and protocols. Mr. Speaker, this issue has now made it extremely difficult for these people to be able to go through this same route. What you now find, Mr. Speaker, is that if you have to go to, for instance, India or Saudi, now passing through, you have to go to Ghana and now be stamped for 14 days to show that you have stayed in Ghana for 14 days before you can be allowed to transit through UAE. Or you go to Kenya or neighboring countries. And these are countries that used to look up to us for their survival. Today, Ghana no longer requires visa to enter UAE. So something must be wrong, Mr. Speaker. And I think that these committees will find solution by finding out what are the, apart from even looking for avenue of ensuring that we resolve the issue of them uh, being able to come in and go out. Why have we gone so low? that even a Ghana that does not even have the kind of population and even the resources that we have in this country can be so granted visa-free nation to enter UAE without all these things that they require Nigerians to undertake before they enter UAE. These are part of issues that I think require that we must find why they are happening. U UAE is a it's a country that believe if you go for armed robbery, they, you are supposed to go for the uh, they go for your life. And I will tell you sincerely, sir, that the first time I was discussing with somebody from there, he told me the first robbery they recorded are from Nigerians here, traveling there, in the name for greener pasture. We are the ones who are undoing ourselves by our conduct, by what we go to do. There's no reason why somebody, will, when you are going for a general business, he will deny you entry to come. But when you are coming to corrupt his own system, to spoil his own people, how will he allow you? Why should citizens of this country have to go to Ghana, go to Togo, pretend they have spent two weeks before flying to United Arab Emirates? We also have our own airline, like this, which I know has been authorized to fly there. So whatever these issues are, let's get 
them result. Um, we might, there might be one or two additions that uh, that I will, I will make because I think that they might have an input as well. Uh, so yes, what we'll do is uh, have the the, the I think chairman and deputy of the standing committees, the relevant committees, and uh, I'll add a, a, some more members to, just to uh, just to help the committee as well. Those in support of the motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. Still in the House, the House of Representatives has invited the Minister of Finance, Education and the leadership of the Academic Staff Union of Universities to address the issues surrounding the intended strike action threatened by the Academic Staff Academic Union. Rather, This was the position of the Speaker, Femi Gbaja Biamila, following a motion on the matters of urgent national importance moved by the Chairman House of Committee on Basic Education, Professor Julius Ngobire at Plenary, the lawmakers stated that ASU President has recently threatened to call out his members across the nation if all the issues including those of unpaid academically earned allowances and the university's revitalization fund are not addressed within the period of three weeks. He observed that the future of Nigerian student once again will be negatively impacted if the impending strike is not nipped in the bud by the federal government adopting the motion. The House urged the federal government to urgently take all necessary measures to open a realistic negotiation with ASU to stop the strike and implement the signed agreement in the interest of students, parents and education sector and the country. Central Bank. What is holding it between the federal government and the central bank, I do not know. So all I'm asking, dear colleagues, is let us beg the federal government to live up to expectation and implement an agreement in time without duress. Simple. If they disrupt these universities again, the implications will be very far reaching. And we can continue like this. This is about the tenth strike from us. And you can blame us. A worker can only use the implement he has that he knows that the boss will listen to him. Just like your driver can decide to stay out of work and see you drive to work if you don't know how to drive. So we are pleading, live up to the agreement, period. If we allow these people to go on strike again, you know how much and how many souls that will be affected. It's affecting everybody. It's affecting everything that concerns us as a nation. And so, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, I have to plead with you to use your good office that you've been doing since uh, night and since day, to call these people to order, to intervene. This is not issue of I am right or I am wrong. Even the Bible says that it is wrong for you to make a vow and not keep to it. It's better that you don't. For the fact that they have agreed and they came with this agreement, those agreements should be simply followed to the letter. Now, we should question ourselves. Ourselves, are we doing the needful? And if we are to do the needful, the federal government should provide that money in the next one month. Because the issue that COVID-19 put back our children at home without doing anything. Now, we also want to use our hands to make them sit down at home without doing anything. The question is, Mr. Speaker, will you preside over a generation fund? that will graduate and yet not make meaningful impact in the economy of your country. The only news is on you today, sir, because you are the leader of the night house of prayer. You are leading me anywhere you say I should go, I'll follow you. This hallowed chamber has all the powers on earth to deploy enough funding to the tertiary institutions with a view to remedy the situation. And luckily enough, we are in the process of passing the budget. Why shouldn't we check the pool by the corner? Having regard to the problem and then deploy enough resources, taking advantage of the present uh, budget that is before us 
to deploy enough resources to the tertiary institution with a view to remedy the situation because the budget as it is presented now is not sacrosanct. Just add this to it that, uh, and I want the notice to go out today, that the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Education, and the representative of ASU will meet in my office on Thursday, uh, meet me in my office on Thursday at 2 p.m. Finance, ASU, and uh, Minister of Education, so that we fast track, fast track this uh, this matter. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. I have it. Appropriation bill for the year ending 2022 was addressed in a public hearing involving civil society groups and other critical stakeholders while presenting their inputs by citizens and civil society groups to the speaker. Peruna State House of Assembly, Yusuf Zilani, and the Commissioner for Budget and Planning Commission, Mohammed Sani. The stakeholders appeal to the state government to improve on its internal generated revenue and stop over dependence on the federal government monthly allocation. After several observations and justification, the Commissioner for Budget and Planning, Commission Mohammed Sani, says all views and recommendations articulated at the public hearing will be looked into during the budget review process that the budget must cover the patients and other matters of public interest they all agree that starting from tomorrow when the ministerial defense will start the document that citizens present today um, you know, to uh, this hallowed house uh, would be used in engaging the various MDAs. So for citizens, I think it's a win. This is the house of the citizens and they came here uh, to present their own side of the budget. They made useful contributions and observations and all those inputs have been taken thanks to the Open Government Partnership. That is uh, what citizens uh, should get as evidence of the... We have received contribution from all over the state and indeed there were some people from outside online they have made their in input we really appreciate it and we are going to work on it we're going to collect it we're going to look at it and input it into the budget now on health the house of representative has passed for second reading a bill to make health care delivery for Nigerian children free and compulsory the bill sponsored by Bello Kauji was passed during the plenary on Wednesday. He said that the proposed bill was occasioned by the fact that children's health is different from the adults because they are exposed to many risks. Although lawmakers raise concerns over funding, however, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajabiamila, said the House should not wait to pass the bill as regards funding. The speaker put the bill in through a voice note and was passed and referred to the House Committee on Healthcare Services. The implementation of the bill is to ensure implementation of this act upon commencement of the Federal Ministry of Health shall make definite procedures, guidelines, as well as monitor and implement the provision of this act, coordinate free healthcare service delivery to these children in Nigeria and ensure transparency and accountability in the free healthcare service delivery. Teaching them, they are backed by law. And one of their functions is to provide healthcare delivery services. You understand? Yes, Even services does not necessarily mean free. You remember yesterday when we were discussing, you said that it is implied that everybody should dress formally. So also, since their essence of their being is to provide healthcare delivery services as national primary healthcare in rural areas, the, it is assumed that whatever money that is appropriated to them, they must profit into providing that healthcare delivery service. Should be able to bring to fore what is the statistics of children in this country? What is the quantum of medical bills settled by families for children in this country? Do we have a corresponding provision in the budget that the primary healthcare development agency can be able to support these families in providing this free medical care. Mr. Speaker, the, we make the budget. We also make the laws. And if we do not have provisions in our budget 
that will support what we are trying to put into law, we will be helping in putting up laws that are unimplementable in our country. Because this is not justiciable, this, are, this, are, this is based on the fundamental objectives of state, uh, state objectives and principles. He is now giving teeth to it by saying whether this, uh, even in 15, 20 years' time, a government must comply with this law that child delivery must be free. <laughs> We're not leaving it to policy. Including what? Okay. From so I think, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I think um, 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 the, the point has been made. And right now we'll be going on a short break. When we return, newsroom continues. to know you're still with us on Newsroom. The wives of Nigeria's service chiefs have urged troops at the front line to be steadfast in their fight against insurgents. This was disclosed by the service chief's wives during a visit to my Malari Cantonment Theater Command in Maiduguri, led by President of Defense and Police Affairs Wives Association, Barrister Victoria Irabo. The wife of the Chief of Defense Staff, Victoria Irabo, encouraged soldiers to continue their constitutional commitment to ensure peace in the Northeast. The senior officers' wives are in my degree to commiserate with the Operation Had in Kai over the loss of its men in a terrorist ambush in Askira attack. It is well in the barracks. It is well. The barracks you left, we are able to, by the grace of God, keep the home front. So, be rest assured that your families are doing well. And be encouraged. Be hopeful. Continue to trust in God. Because your wives and children back home are all praying for you. Without your support, we do not have a lot of Nigerian presence around in the Northwest and the Northeast. So we really thank you for the support. This, this is a partnership that works, a partnership in progress, a partnership in success. While you work on the Internet, it will ensure that we look at social and economic realities of our people so that you don't run out of energy so that we can reach the world class. I know the troops 
knowing that you are here, know that you care for us. And we can assure you that the troops are ever ready, despite the setback, to continue to push until we have the much needed peace in the Northeast. And we assure you that we continue to push, we continue to ensure that we destroy all the enemies of the country, wherever they are and whoever is responsible. Now on judiciary, the House of Representatives has called for the establishment of an intervention fund for the judiciary, insisting that it has been long overdue. Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Judiciary, Onofio Luke, stated this during the budget defense of some agencies in the judiciary on Wednesday, insisting that this is the only way the judiciary can carry out their responsibilities effectively. Onofio further emphasized the need for a secured environment, better living condition, and provision of advanced technological infrastructure for them. On the invasion of Justice Mary Odile's residence, the House warned that such a thing should not repeat itself. Fund for youth. We have had intervention fund for entertainment. I don't think that it would be out of place for the federal government to have an intervention fund for the judiciary. We believe that this is the only way that the judiciary can meet up with its um, competing demands and challenges facing the judiciary as we go on. And of importance to us in this committee is that we have started an advocacy as a committee and then it has been adopted partly by the House that we are seeking for the review of salaries and remunerations of judicial officers. And so we are going to be seeking for your cooperation. We are going to be seeking for the cooperation of Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Physical Commission in this regard so that um, an exercise that was undertaken 14 years ago needs an upward review today. We need to revisit, revisit it. Now, the House of Representatives has taken steps to remove the Code of Conduct Tribunal from the control of the executive arm of government and uh, domicile it in the judiciary as an independent arm of government. This is as the, as the House passed through a second reading, a bill to alter the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, with a view of removing the CCT and a judiciary body from the executive arm and placing it under the judiciary as a superior court of record. Sponsors of the bill, Solomon Bob and Olajide and Ola Tumbosun, said the bill proposed to amend some sections of the Constitution, among others, that a deal with superior courts of record and sought to incorporate the CCT among them. Leading a debate on the bill, Bob said in a presidential democracy such as Nigeria's, the three arm of government, the legislature, executive and judiciary, are distinct and separate in functions, powers and composition. The lawmakers said these provisions clearly include the tribunal as a judiciary body with the powers of uh, a competent court of record, adding that failure to situate it under the judicial arm of government is contrary to the principle of a separation of powers. But the judicial tribunal, clothed with enormous powers to sanction public officers found guilty of violating the Code of Conduct Act, including power to order forfeiture and bar offenders from public, holding public office is placed under the executive rather than the judiciary and armed where it rightly belongs. The punishments which the Code of Conduct Tribunal may impose shall include any of the following A. Vacation of office or seats in any legislative house, as the case may be. B. Disqualification from membership of the legislative house and from holding of any public office for a period not exceeding 10 years. The National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, has called on the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government to go back to the negotiation table in the interest of Nigerian students instead of embarking on a fresh industrial action which will further affect the academic calendar. 
president of the association who stated this in Bauchi on the occasion of this year's International Students' Day also advocated for proper funding of public tertiary institutions in the country in order to ensure they meet the demands of both public and private sector. Our Bauchi state correspondent, Awal Hassan, tells us more. November 17th every year is a day set aside by the World Students' Union to celebrate the International Students' Day. This year's celebration in Bauchi, which was honored by the president of the National Association of Nigeria Students, NANS, Comrade Sunday Adidayo at the Federal Polytechnic Bauchi, focuses on call to the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government to ensure peaceful resolution of their problems in the interest of the Nigerian students. We must acknowledge the challenge as a venue to also work across board to ensure a better system. I therefore, on behalf of all the, students, all the Nigerian students, plead with the ASU and the federal government to serve their sword in the interest of Nigerian students and work together to ensure continuity in our academic calendar, thereby improving the quality of education in our tertiary institution. The president also calls for proper funding of the country's tertiary institutions, which he says can go a long way in improving educational standards. I call for a public proper funding of public polytechnics, colleges of education, monotechnics. The proven funding is necessary to ensure to ensure our public institutions meet the personal need of both public and private sectors. It is therefore imperative that the government should start considering 25% increment in money payable to tenfold as education tax. On his part, the executive governor of Bauchi State, who was represented by Chief of Staff Adam Gamawa, calls on the students to be innovative in their learning in order to build character for good leadership. So take your learning opportunity here as part of your leadership and character building. The certificate you will get at the end of the day is not for what you know alone. It's also for the character that you have built. I hope you will use this opportunity that you have of attending very good schools that we are very proud of um, and we also associate with in our administration to learn in the classroom and to learn outside the classroom. He says, the Bauti state government will continue to support education for the benefit of the citizenry. Awal Hassan, VR TV News, Bauti. Still in Bauchi, the Bauchi state governor, Bala Muhammad, has presented a budget proposal of 195 billion naira for the capital and recurrent services for the 2022 fiscal year to the State House of Assembly. The budget, which according to Governor Bala Muhammad, is 8.5% lower than this year's comprised recurrent expenditure of 84 billion naira, constituting 43%. While capital expenditure received the sum of 110 billion naira at 57 percent, our Bauchi state correspondent Awal Hassan completes the story. The moment when Bauchi state governor Bala Muhammad presented a budget proposal for the 2022 fiscal year to the State House of Assembly. The governor, while presenting the budget proposal before the State House of Assembly, says the 2022 budget is 8.5 lower than this year, a reduction of which is arrived at in order to align the government's project with the current economic realities. This conservative approach was adopted to ensure the project and programs captured are implemented. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the process of the preparation of the budget has been all inclusive. Budget public hearings were conducted in the three senatorial districts, where inputs from stakeholders were elicited and incorporated into the budget. Governor Bala Muhammad says the budget comprised of recurrent expenditure of over 84 billion naira at 43 percent, while capital expenditure received the sum of over 110 billion naira 
which is at 57%. The sum of 112 billion, 355 million, 607,143 naira have been budgeted for capital and current services during the 2022 fiscal year. This comprises of current expenditure of 84 billion, 375 million, 180,510 naira almost 3%, while capital expenditure receives the sum of 110 billion, 620 million, 406,625 naira, or 27% of the budget. In this remark, the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Abu Bakar Rai Suleiman, reassures their commitment for a continuous working relationship with the executive arm of the government for the development of the state. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to assure you that we are ready to execute the same commitment for the good people of both the state. We will dispatch the passionate please to manage the budget and ensure its timely passage. The proposal was tagged Budget of Consolidation and Continuous Commitment. Awal Hassan, viewer TV News. The Academic Staff Union of Universities and the federal government have reached an agreement on the 22.17 billion naira earned allowances and 30 billion naira fertilization fund. The agreement was reached on Thursday after a meeting between the representative of ASU, led by its president Victor Osudike, and the government representative, led by Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed and Minister of State for Education Emeka Wajuba. The meeting was presided over by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajai Pia Miller. The House had on Tuesday resolved to intervene following a motion by Julius Novberry, where the Speaker announced that there will be meeting the Union and the Federal Government. The Union had issued three weeks ultimatum to the Government on the October Agreement, said that if the Government shall fail, the Union will, um, will embark on strike. But Pierre Miller, in his opening remarks, said strike actions should be the last resort and also criticized the government for failing to fulfill its part of the agreement. At the meeting, also the case said the union had given the federal government several opportunities to fulfill the 2009 agreement and other agreements signed on the Integrated Payroll and Personal Information System, IPPIS, the speaker said the Committee on Telecommunication will interface with the union. When, as soon as our member come there, because we are still at that meeting that we should not enroll until we are filling this year and supply. And they wrote here that when they come here and finish uh, uh, registration, they will be paid. Which means what they were doing is trying to blackmail the people to come and register. You hold somebody's salary. The list is here, it's heavy. This is for four universities. So in all the universities, put it together, I said, no, more than 10,000 people, I still have more problem on the other way like this. Among the academic and non-academic staff. Our position in the ministry is that there is nothing that ASU is saying that we do not agree with. There is no reason for them to go on strike at all. There is no reason for strike. It is a continuum. Government is such. You have heard that we have actually submitted the letter to the National Assembly for mainstreaming of this and allowances. If we didn't think so, sir, we wouldn't have submitted the letter. We did. Uh, I, the National Assembly, by its own laws, may not necessarily be the person to do this. I'm sure they will upscale this to the National Wages and Salaries Commission so that they can then put some sort of guidance around it. So we've done our part. Everything that they've asked us to do, we've done. The, the country is a continuum. So there's no end day for payments. I'm concerned that the, the, the chairman uh, said that there are some staff that have up to 17 months of salaries not paid. I haven't got I haven't got any such report. We have a report here that shows four universities that sent the list and we have finished paying them. So if the report doesn't come to us, then we will not be able to act on it. So please let us know which universities those are and let the universities give us the information. We check and if it is verified we pay them. As long as we have the information we'll be able to process and and, and pay them, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to appeal to um, ASU to please not use this uh, weapon or threat of strike because it's not good for 
uh, our children and it's not good for the for, for the nation. But let us agree on the fact that we committed to that money. It's a lot of money, but you know we cannot have an agreement and then later on say, oh, the money is too much. And I agree with you, it's a lot of money. I'd rather not have entered into the agreement in the first place. And if I'm not able to meet the agreement, then I'll call the, the person I agreed with and say, look, this is the situation. Please bear with me. Uh, and let's work out some figures, which are based on the the the, the chronology, the as well as giving from 2009 to 2017, 2019, and so on and so forth. There's been a lot of back and forth. <clears throat> what I want to say on that, uh, uh, my appeal is going to be to ASU, but also, honestly, other minister, we need to resolve this thing once and for all. And that's all for Newsroom. Thank you for your time and company. My name is Philips Levin.